what should you pay your crew? That's what we're going to look at here. But I should preface this by saying that what people earn is a very personal thing. And in the world of independent filmmaking, a very inconsistent thing. These numbers will vary wildly by location and by project. So they are presented here as the numbers we used and should not be seen as the standards that you should use. To create the budget, I sat down with Gavin Booth, our first assistant director. He took out a pen, paper, and just scribbled out the basics we'd need. I think both of us probably would have preferred the cleanliness of doing this digitally, but this method was faster, and it worked. I used this little scrap of paper here as a guide throughout pre-production and would add to it as the needs of wardrobe got bigger or we realized that our location fees were going to be a lot more than we initially planned for or whatever. Now you'll notice that some of the crew are paid on the back end. This is a term often used in the film world and often has very negative connotations. A back end deal is one where people are paid after the film is released and generating revenue. The problem is short films rarely make any money. So this is often a way for unscrupulous producers to lure cast and crew members to work for nothing. But the difference with the assurance is that it's part of this training on lynda.com, which will generate income. So this is how I paid these crew members. Normally though, at least in the indie world, back-end deals are very risky. How much did the members of the crew get? Well, that usually varies pretty wildly. Gavin has an interesting theory about how he likes people to get paid on a film set. There's a basic edict I have to try to pay people the same amount, in a sense. Yeah. When someone finds out, like, what? Josh got 400 a day and you're paying me $65? Yeah, yeah. It's just for morale and everything. Now, this is an interesting idea, and I see his point. And we actually kind of tried to do this. Most crew members and the top cast made $150 a day. Our concept artists charged $150 to make the master version of the assurance and the concept for the demon Galhatan. But for skilled crew positions, especially those that come with their own expensive gear, $150 a day just isn't enough. For positions like sound mixer and gaffer, the pay usually starts at around $400 a day, with the director of photography, or DP, probably earning the most on a set, from my experience. Our original DP quit at the last minute, so I took over that job as well. And part of the reason I did was monetary. Our old DP was going to get paid on the back end. So to hire a new DP, we'd have to pay them out of our budget, which we really didn't have the cash for at that point. And I work for free, so I stepped in. I should also point out that I have some amazing friends that bent over backwards and volunteered to help with this project without pay. Bitsy did our wardrobe for just the cost of the materials. Susan did all the craft services and cooked all of the meals. Bri was our second assistant director. Kelsey Tiger played the blonde woman offering sacrifice, and Amy Enser was our script supervisor. These are all very talented people that are busy and in high demand that gave so much to helping out on this film. So I'm really glad that I wasn't you know, too much of a jerk to them before the assurance because it was really great having their help. The musicians in our orchestra were all volunteers and all the extras that spent hours in the freezing cold were volunteers as well. So we were sure to be kind and gracious and feed everyone really well for their contributions. But the fact that people were willing to donate so much of themselves really helped us out. Of course, we would have loved to have paid everyone what they're really worth. I mean, it feels terrible paying people less than a living wage for all of their efforts. But when making a short film, there really just isn't much money to be made. So people generally understand that you're not going to get much money back on the project and are sometimes willing to be a little bit more flexible with their rates. Now, we've been focusing on production, but there's much more that needs to go into the budget, which we'll look at in the next tutorial.